Well, 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 welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. It's a nice and beautiful morning over here in Helsinki, Finland. Want to be wishing well, want to be wishing you the best of the best, the happy of the happiest. Saturdays, possibly you could ever have in your good cryptocurrency life, whether you're waking up for a nice early morning coffee with me over in here in the uh, Eastern European Hemisphere, or you're coming back from a late night dancing on all sorts of tables and drinking all kinds of dirty waters in, uh, in late night America. Well, I want to be wishing well. And let's talk about some goddamn magic internet money. Getting a live scene right here, right now. Bitcoin still ranging between the two big areas that we've been speaking about for the past uh, for the past week or so. Essentially, this is the outlook from the intermediate time frame, if, you know, if I could state it as such. Essentially, be playing between the 377 exponential for uh, resistance right over here at about 50 I call it actually 5250 um, and our and our 200 exponential right over here rounding out our major support so as long as Bitcoin's kind of range between this area I'm just a buyer and support seller and resistance of course to really get uh, deep and down and dirty into this we need to go down to the lower time frames but now we have to switch our focus down to the lower to you know the the lower time frames essentially so this sort of action operates a lot faster and something that you know I don't really put all too much weight on myself but I know that there's a lot of a uh, lot of a lot more cavalier people out there will say that uh that would like to trade a time frame like this on a weekend which is in my opinion fucking crazy but hey bitcoin just playing between this resistance right here at about 50 let's call it 50 50 and uh in this support right over here at about 4800 a few ticks below it but essentially you can see bitcoin trying to flag out in this range as it does reset the all sorts after a major massive move over the past week a 1000 dollar move very likely to just go sideways for a while as both sides kind of figure things out i would be looking for a retest of support overall uh down into this blue box territory if possible ideally speaking if bitcoin can close this next weekly above you know anywhere above essentially 44 I mean, it's going to look good um, from a technical analysis standpoint. It's just, you know, as, uh, as far as the intermediate time frame after that, I'd just be looking to buy anything within this range. Um, and of course, not because not because it's financial advice or, or or I'm a financial advisor. I'm certainly not any of those things, but I'm just sharing what I'm doing these exact sort of same situations. What I can say, however, though, is that uh, it just offers up a very nice and easy risk reward play for more of an intermediate term hodl, I suppose you could say. Uh, with that in mind, I actually, I actually do still have my my long open over here on my Druid account. Um, not really, not really doing anything with that right now. Just kind of letting it run. I uh, do have some short calls against it, but I will add if we actually do take out this resistance to the upside, not this one right here, this 50, uh, this 50, 51, as I've been kind of saying, but this blue box territory right over here, which is about 52, 50. As if that were to happen, I would be looking for a straight shot. No, I shouldn't say a straight shot, but I'd be looking for a move towards, uh, towards about 56 to 5,700. So multiple trades be had in this range. And of course, that's why I'm not in any sort of, uh, in any sort of a rush to get into a position right here when we're like, when we're right, when we're quite literally right in the middle of a range because I know that you know if, if we break out I'm happy to buy a breakout if we come back down to the area that I you know that I'd like to manage to trade off of I'll take both those trades but in this range right here I'm not too interested right here uh like I said though it's I mean you know you can certainly make some good decisions if we do take out this 50 50 ish area then you know technically speaking I would be looking for a move to 51 50 52 50 ish area this nice blue box territory right over here perhaps a 100 dollar play not bad I mean it's tradable um not something that I'm interested in doing on a weekend as weekend action is typically typically more hunts than anything rather than legitimate you know trending moves yes we have them every once in a while but more often than not they are just hunts and then reverse back to the mean and i would say especially after a major massive move like this what's most likely to happen is that so uh, whether the hunt comes to the upside or the downside we do some more ranging while uh, while bitcoin kind of figures itself out looking at our oscillators we do see four hour stokes are upwards and onwards so i would be saying that uh, it's more likely that we get a test upwards first and foremost um, in the lower time frames, uh, we do see that four hour RSI not really telling us too much. Just a bullish consolidation is what it's saying right now. Uh, four hour jewel will be setting up uh, maybe later tomorrow, perhaps when uh, when CME is open back up, which is going to be the next, you know, the, also the next trade idea that I'll be looking at as well. But for right now, just pretty neutral, uh, neutral, neutral slash bullish on the lower to medium time frames. I would say uh, going over here to the eight hour, we still we have eight hour stokes snaking around, uh, looking a little bit weak, but actually still down. In fact, all of the higher, all the medium to high time frames are down let's go here to the six hour six hours still down eight hours we just saw down 10 hour down uh 12 hour down daily is going to be down two day is getting way up there but we haven't got a new tick on that and three day is oh man this one's going to be the big one to watch later tonight and i'm going to flush that on just a second but first things first i do want to cover more on the lower time frames and while we are here you know, there's plenty of trades be made. Uh, you, again, you can make this as easy for yourself as or, uh, or as hard for yourself as you want to, or as you want it to be. But uh, but essentially, 
you know, if we do check out this 50 50 ish area, yes, I'd look towards this blue box territory. Do we think that we break this over the weekend? Probably not. If, if it is going to happen, it happens next or it happens at least, you know, after CME is open, most likely. Uh, I would not want to see it break over the weekend. That would be more indicative of a, you know, of a bull trap, actually. Uh, but for right now, Mm, to me, it uh, does look like it wants to give a little bit of a test into this area, perhaps find out where the liquidity does indeed lie as you do see volume kind of fall off on this overall formation. We have not seen any sort of follow through from this major massive uh, bearish engulfing dildo right over here, which tells me that this is not, you know, th uh, if, if, you, if you don't have it within like that first day, it's not you want to have it relatively quickly. Um, this is going to turn into a consolidation, not a, you know, uh, this is not a reversal dildo right here. Um, I think that that's pretty, you know, pretty appropriate to say. Anyways, going over, going on over here into the 12 hour, 12 actually looks like it wants up as well, even though uh, oscillators are down, that's completely fine. I do see that we have a little bit of bearish divergence on our 12 hour uh, time frame right over here which typically does get played, but uh, I wouldn't rule out putting in a little bit of a, 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 you know, a little bit of a higher high right over here, uh, taking a stab into this next blue box territory. And then I look for supports to be found. Uh, we do see 12 hour jewel mm, starting to set up a little bit. Uh, some people might've taken this as a signal yesterday, you know, fair enough if you did. Uh, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I, I wouldn't have taken that one. I don't think it's a perfect signal. And, uh, and overall got to realize that on the 12 hour, more, more importantly, we do have the 12 hour total golden cross right over here. Here, which historically speaking has been pretty damn good uh, we can go back in time and do a little do a little bit of a time machine activity and uh, the last time that we actually had a golden cross on the 12 hour i believe the last time that we had a golden cross on the 12 hour was yeah right around here right around here in uh in september 2016 when bitcoin was about a little under 600 dollars. so 600 dollars all the way to twenty thousand dollars was your was your last golden cross then we got death crossed uh, right over here at about 11 that eleven and a half thousand, and uh just got golden crossed about uh, some sometime early last week so again historically speaking this is pretty damn powerful and uh, we are above all major moving averages which is certainly my signal as i've been kind of stating before um whenever i see whenever i see a cross like that i don't trade against it so uh, according to this time frame to be clear of course higher in macro time frames i don't want to sound like i've changed my opinion right there just yet uh it's still you know still the trend the uh the trend there is still is still very much uh confirmed down until until otherwise said doesn't mean that it can't happen we're, we're going to go through that soon enough but for now i want to focus on the more actionable things as uh well who wants to wait for a fucking monthly when you could trade a 12 hour and uh and as we see on the 12 hour major massive volume being poured into this you know uh, in, uh into this rally we're doing you know we did what um oh man we need to get back on over here to bit mexico yeah we did about three billion in this in this uh in this 12 hour dollar this is volume that we really haven't seen in a very 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 long time i think the last time that we saw it was right over here on the breakage of six thousand yeah um that's the last time that we saw that kind of volume being thrown down uh, about four billion actually a little bit more but uh but fair enough you know it's you know overall it's comparable is my point so that is what i'm looking at right now for the media to low time frames uh, essentially just grinding this area out and then I would be looking for a retest down into the 4600 ne level next week uh, ideally it uh, doesn't mean that it needs to happen doesn't have to happen but I would say that uh, that's the area where, I, where, where I'd really be happy to put on to a trade uh, the other way that I put on a long trade is if we break out 5250 to the upside uh, looking for about 56 to 57 if that were to happen I do believe that the volume profile does agree with this idea let's go back on over here and put on the volume profile right now and there you you go yeah you can kind of see that we're kind of constructing a high value node right now in fact i mean <laughs> relatively speaking um but the next area if we do break above this area would be 55 to 56 or yeah uh, 56 we'll call it you know kind of take the median of that um but overall, you can see that Bitcoin can really rip through this area. It ripped through on the way down because there's very, 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 very low market acceptance. And it can rip through on the way up as well. Just same sort of logic. And uh, and that's exactly what I'd be thinking right here at that at, at that 4600 level as well. You know, the thing is, is that Bitcoin, when it went, when Bitcoin was on its massive tear of 2017 over here, and let's actually go to Bitstamp. Um, when Bitcoin was on its massive tear in 2017, it basically just fucking zoomed right on through this area and you can see that there was no volume profile being put in this area which I, I i always like to make the analogy of like building a house and you want to have like a strong structural integrity to build your house higher well we skipped a bunch of floors you know during the planning of this you know the the foundation was not laid out all that well and that's why we're kind of coming back in here filling in the gaps figuring out exactly you know where the demand does indeed lie and you can see it's you know it's by no surprise that we're actually quite literally stuck right in the middle of the high you know, oh, sorry of the lowest value node which uh which is where bitcoin is really having really having a lot of fun recently just because uh you see these you see these more tradable like 
ranges and you know you know on a lo on on lower time frames uh four hour you know four hour dollars before would have like a range of twenty five dollars this one you know i'm just picking a, a random one right here this one had a range of twenty five fucking dollars high to low uh, this one over here had range of even less than that less than twenty dollars uh now we're having ranges of like you know a hundred dollars um which is certainly uh, you know a lot you know a lot more opportunity can be had right now of course it is a weekend though i do remind myself because it's not like I'm, I'm not looking for trades on the weekend really i'm looking to manage my my open trades if anything um so yeah <clears throat> anyways um okay let's go check out where cme's closed because that's going to be the next big thing to be aware of coming into uh, coming into the Sunday open at 7 p.m. Eastern time, uh, you can see that CME is closed at about 5,000 even. So that means uh, the next trade that I'd essentially be looking towards is looking at where spot is in relation to CMEs. If spot is when when CME is open, if spot is trading above when CME is open at 7 p.m. Eastern time on Sunday, then I would be looking to be a buyer on the gap fill back down to 5,000. By the same token, if uh, if spot is trading underneath 5,000, I'd be looking to be a seller, and that would probably be the impetus for a move down to that 4600 level um other than that on on cmes right now we actually did have some pretty massive selling going on yesterday uh as a rejection of the 200 simple and again i do actually put a lot more weight on the cmes chart and this area is just laden with resistances. We're not just going to show it on CMEs, but now I'm going to start to go through the higher time frames and flush out the you know the case saying, hey, be cautious in this area. This is not the time to be gung ho, in my opinion. This is the time to be this is the time to be cautious and protective of your profits, uh, assuming you know assu assuming that you had a good last week, which I know a lot of people did. I mean, shit, man, I've been getting messages left, right, and center saying people have been making all kinds of fucking money. That's what I love to hear. I fucking love that. So please send me you know send me more. It's it's really really amazing because it's you know to hear the stories of people and like how how just like some some very very small thing can just change someone's life is really fucking inspiring really fucking inspiring man i mean shit man i could i could tell i could tell a few stories probably not appropriate i'd probably actually want to ask for permission first too but like it there's you just don't I mean, man? It's there. There, there's some cool shit going on up there. I'll, I'll tell you that. Uh, anyways, right over here on the daily four CMEs, we do see daily Stokes crossing down, but more importantly, they are creating a nice formation right here, a nice ascending triangle, which. Uh, which realistically, what I want to be looking for is actually the breakage of the support of this triangle. It's very unlikely to break up. I mean, yes, I know it's a tiny triangle. I don't look at it as such. I just look at support and resistance essentially and kind of how we react off there. And usually when you get kind of stuck in this more crazy territory, uh, the move is going to be to the downside. And then we come back, test the edge of the bullish control zone somewhere right around here. So that's going to kind of be the next big plays as far as this one goes. And this one has been a pretty damn good marker. In fact, you can see a very obvious resistance trend line on the Stokes right over here going all through out uh, 2018 and uh, then we kind of broke above it on that move past uh, past 4,000 on that consolidation uh, you know on that consolidation right at 4,000 and then move past it working on this area so that's kind of what I'd be looking at from the CME perspective and uh, and overall you know if we did break that area down it's not you know it's not death sense it, it would just imply that we'd likely have that move down to 4600 which is kind of what I'm looking towards um, as it's you know as it stands right here on the CMEs from uh, from a daily perspective not too much else to be to be aware of I do like how, the, how there is increasing volume uh, coming out of this area um, but the biggest highest value, uh, volume uh, node or sorry the the the, the biggest high volume uh, dildo is actually a major rejection dildo right here so I would be careful with that, as uh, this one does 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 suggest a little bit more sell pressure, and I would, I, you know, I think it would be a little bit unlikely that Bitcoin breaks out of this territory to the upside in the week during the weekend. While this one's closed, I think, um, I think what's more likely is that we grind this area out at the, at our current top, if anything, and then come back down to open the week, and then probably try again higher. That's you know, that's if if I'm giving my opinion, that's it. Of course, I don't trade my opinion; I trade technical analysis, and technical analysis actually agrees with that. <laughs> so, so you know, it's 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 one of those instances where they all kind of meet up. But now let's kind of talk about the more higher to macro time frames, which we'll go over here, start off with the daily. And I do want to remind, I always want to be, be reminded of this area being massive, massive resistance. The 377 exponential is something that I look at in general markets to be demonstrative of, like, to be demonstrative of ex the longer term trend. And uh, and right now we've sold off pretty aggressively from it. You can see that we have a nice wick uh, about $350 higher, which to me is, you know, that that is a rejection. We also have daily stokes coming down. We also have two day hitting up into the 200 exponential, this purple moon average right over here, which has confirmed as a very high volume rejection as well. Uh, shooting star dildo 
Um, we have not had continuation to the downside, but uh, but you can see on the two-day that not only do we have the, not only were we rejected by the 200 exponential, but the 377 is actually still trading below the 200 exponential, and that's going to be a massive stopper as well. So I'd imagine that if Bitcoin does give another try right around that 51, 50 to 5200 ish range, I would I would be looking for resistance as well. Um, we do see two-day RSI getting to levels that we haven't seen since uh, late late 2017 on the run towards 20,000. More importantly, though, and what's more actionable is that we actually broke above the bullish control zone right over here, which had kind of been resistance going throughout all of 2018. Uh, so overall, you know, it's kind of, you know, as long as we're as long as we're above this area, uh, I do give the nod to the bulls from this time frame. And I do not it, it but also at the same time, uh, it's very important to realize that uh, we can come all the way back down there, which would incite that we could have, you know, a pullback uh, again, one, once again, towards that 45 or sorry, for, uh, 4,600 level, which is actually the 89 exponential on the two day total time frame. If you go over here to the three day, three day total time from getting rejected by the 200 exponential. In fact, the, the exact same thing that we see on the two day and three day, uh, more importantly speaking, and uh, three day stokes, we're going to be closing these later tonight. And there's a very, 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 very important thing to be aware of. Where do these three-day stokes close? Because putting on a trend line right over here, which we've been monitoring for the last like month and a half, and this is this is a really good case study because we've been looking at this for the last month and a half, and now it's finally there. It's finally fucking there, and it's time. And, and it's and you can see that these things move quite slowly. Realistically, the the higher time frame picture moves very slowly. So that's why you know when people say we've been in this bear market for four months, we can't go lower. Lows are in. It's like uh. What the fuck did I just hear? I mean, these things take a long time, man. Um, it's very premature to be saying anything right now, I'd say. Uh, except for Mrs. Litecoin, which we'll get to later. But uh, but this trend line born all the way from late 2017 when Bitcoin was about twenty thousand uh, twenty thousand dollars price per Bitcoin. I almost said dildos price per get per, price per Bitcoin. I'd I'd hope that it's higher. Um, <laughs> you gotta up your quality, my friends. And uh, in this trend line, getting all of the major bull traps uh, since then, si uh, since a twenty thousand turnaround right over here, the bull trap at uh, at ten thousand in May 2018, and the bull trap at eighty four hundred in August uh, 2018 as well. Once again, we are meeting this trend line, and you can see that the stokes are getting tired in fact there are they're, they're they're kissing right now so depending upon how this next tick operates i would be looking you know i am looking for the insight onto whether this holds up or not um and and if we do see this cross down and turn right at this trend line that tells me that that is going to still be respected and uh this is called you know all those major tops uh, does that mean that i'll be calling a reversal right here it means at the very least i'd be looking for that move down at 4600 and i would be cautious with it um because it would look like we're still kind of respecting it but overall not only that but we actually do have a rising trend line right here which yeah, you can make you can make the well. It's 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 a lot less uh, surgical. I, I I go with the more tried and true one. Uh, but overall, I want to see where that next tick is, which we will get confirmation on later tonight at 8 p.m. East. Uh, yes, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, so yes, just another thing right around this uh, 5250 to 5300 ish level. We go over here to the weekly and weekly, same sort of thing. Get off their volume profile. We see the 50 exponential and the 89 exponential resisting price action as well. In fact, the 89 exponential providing a a clear and obvious uh, a clear and obvious rejection so far. But there's multiple. There, there are multiple things to be aware of on this time frame. We'll get to them in just a second. But uh, most importantly, we do have a cross to the downside. We do have a 50 exponential, this green moving average cross on the downside of the Cyan 89 exponential, which is, again, intuitively a lower period cross on the downside of a higher period. And that's just telling you about the overall trend with re with regards to that period. Um, and uh, right now, we are respecting that. That would, that would be saying that that is still to the downside. As long as we are rejecting this area, that is how I look at it. And a lot of the times, it's very, 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 very common to come back and retest these areas after you've, you know, after you've had the cross. It's extremely common. And then the reaction off that cross is insightful into, whether, into what the bots and algos are doing for that. So this is going to be absolutely critical to decide where the next, um, what do you want to call it, where the next uh, few weeks of Bitcoin goes. Sorry, I shouldn't say a few weeks, uh, probably month, month and a half to where Bitcoin goes, uh, depending upon how we close this next weekly. Does this turn into a rejection or not is really going to you know, dictate the pace because right now it, we are respecting this area. And I would be, you know, and it's just another thing saying, hey, watch out for that 5250 ish area. Uh, it is it is laden with resistances on the daily two day, three day, weekly. And we're going to go to the monthly in just a second. But before we do that, actually, you know, what? let's 
Yeah, let's go to the monthly right now and flush flush this out. Uh, we'll go over here to the monthly. Uh, monthly, same sort of thing, right? Coming back up, testing this yellow 21 exponential and also the red 10 moving moon average. And again, we have a lower period crossing the downside of a higher period. And we're just coming back and retesting this right here, right now. And so far, we have rejected beautifully right exactly where the 21 exponential is, which is right around about 50, a little bit above 5,200. So in, in a zone, you know, it's I, I, don't, I don't like to get super granular with that. Um, but 5,200, 5,250, I'm kind of using these things interchangeably. Uh, but same, you know, same sort of thing here, lower period crossing the downside of a higher period and we're respecting it so far and this is this is one of those things that i actually would pay attention to you know coming back uh, uh, coming from my background as a professional trader on the floor of new york stock exchange arc is i would look at this you know i i, I would certainly look at the 21 exponential on a monthly to kind of judge if a stock if an equity was essentially you know generally bullish or generally bearish and right now ever since we've been living below it since uh november uh, we have been respecting it and that would be my general disposition with that looking back at 2014 and kind of just back testing this you can see that when bitcoin actually lost it right over here the 21 exponential that was actually the 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 only time before this in 2018 um it it spent it spent a lot of time below there testing it once twice three times and then breaking it on the fourth. But look at this: once it broke the 21 exponential to the upside, once it closed above right here, that was your perfect timing into a bull market cycle, uh, full onwards and upwards. So that also means that uh, that if Bitcoin does close above this 21 exponential, I I switch to bullish. But has to be done on a monthly deal to closing basis. And right now we are resisting this area. And more importantly, this cross looks like it wants to be played out. Now, I know a lot of people are saying, Crown, what the fuck, man? We had a cross right over here. And it wasn't respected. Well, it, I mean, here's the thing. It kind of was because we actually returned back down to the low side of the range. But more importantly, Bitcoin was younger at this point. Bitcoin barely had enough time to really even populate these moving averages as, remember, you know, on a monthly 21, you need at least 21 months to have one fucking tick on the, you know on this uh you know on this moving average and uh and realistically speaking it was too young for it to really be played out or i imagine that you know the big the big market movers they're not going to be looking at a monthly to kind of judge and dictate the pace they're going to be looking at a weekly which the weekly crosses you can see were played quite well actually uh, having a pretty nasty one right over here and then playing it all the way down crossing it back to the upside right over here i'd say that that's perfect and now because bitcoin's about you know almost twice the age uh, i think it was about you know four to five years right over here it's about f uh, eight to nine years right over here um, I would say that this is gonna have this is gonna likely hold more weight but like I said I'll be waiting for confirmation either which way it's uh it's you know it's a very e easy play to make if you just let it be but I also do think that's a very somber in reality that when you do look at the monthly while everyone's getting extremely excited remember that the monthly is you know the monthly is what kind of dictates the longer term outlook the macro time frames that I like to explain them and uh, we have no higher lows we have no higher highs which is needed for an uptrend and an uptrend is what makes a bull market um so on you know on a time frame like this and you know when we get another 20 to 30 years then we can start using you know quarterly or sorry yeah quarterly dildos uh to kind of judge that and then eventually yearly but that's you know that's way down the road um for right now the monthly is probably going to get it the best which to me, I mean, the monthly the monthly has been a pretty damn good um, indication. The past uh, the past uh, what you know what do you want to say um, the past year uh, we broke the twenty one exponential right over here down 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 uh, broke the fifty exponential and then we were saying that uh, coming into March we were looking at this fifty exponential right over here for when Bitcoin was you know if Bitcoin was going to close above or below it I was saying if it closed below it I become bearish looking for a move down likely to twenty five hundred if we close above it well that opens up the floodgates I was saying uh, mid to highs four uh, thousands obviously I got completely blown out of the mar uh, out of the water with that one but that's why I don't trade my opinion I trade technical analysis and actually got lucky with my position again showing my position right over here uh, born from 3930. You know, I you know if I was awake when that was going on, I would have sold that position at forty six hundred right at the daily two hundred simple and two hundred exponential. Uh, so I'd have missed out on another five hundred dollars most likely. But hey, you know that's the beauty of living in 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 Eastern Europe. <laughs> Don't have to worry about that. The moves all happen when you're sleeping. No, of course not. Uh, still, still, you know that's that's what options are for. So, um, so anyways, <clears throat> you know the monthly obviously closed above the fifty. So we we have good history now that this is actually being played off of. That's my point. And uh, and you know once it closed above the 50, it got us it just got a straight fucking shot towards the 21 uh so now the game is do we close above or below the 21 exponential uh likely the first pass does get rejected it's very very common i mean that's not a death sentence either um and look at how many times we tested it in uh in 2014 over here before actually taking it out i mean one two three uh four essentially so you know again it's 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 gonna take its time it's gonna take its time and that's also what i'm saying as well is that hey 
there's no real rush from my side of things, um, as especially as long as we're below the monthly 21 exponential. And uh, and 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 if you want to be super traditional, I'd say the 6,000 level right over here. If Bitcoin, if Bitcoin can get back above that, um, hey, that's that's I, I, I think that's going to be good enough for certainly most people, mo most longer term investors. I guess the super conservative guys are going to be looking right over here at about 80 or about 8,000. They, they're going to want to see a higher high over this guy right over here to be ultra sure. But you know, I, th I think it's worth a trade. But again, that's just me. That's not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Just kind of sharing what I do in these in these in these sort of situations. Uh, hopefully, I want to be as open and honest as possible, as transparent as possible. Because in this space, you know, you have all sorts of well, well, interesting folks. I would say that uh, it's a very inspiring space as well. But in some in some ways, a little bit disappointing. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> again, uh, and this is just a great example of me of me trading technical analysis, not my opinion. Because in this area right over here, yeah, I was you know I was overall bearish. Uh, from from the macro perspective, uh, in this area right over here, this was constructive. That's why I took the long. We come, we came down, test, tested a major um, a major support. I'm always going to be a buy on support, sell on resistance. This one never. I mean, I never really had to sell on resistance because we never we we never really had a pullback after that actually. Uh, so again, those are how I actually do trade breakouts. Just being a support and resistance trader, I typically don't buy breakouts or 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 sell breakdowns. Um, I typically get in them by doing something like this, and then you know once the pattern is mature enough, it just you know it it doesn't have those pullbacks which would which would trigger a stop loss for myself. So yeah. Anyways, um, so we spoke all about that. Yeah, higher time frames. I just want to be very 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 sure or sorry, very clear with stating that a uh, lot of things in this area. And that is why I would not be in any sort of a rush right here right now. Um, of course, I know everyone's talking about this. Everyone's talking about the good old MVT signal, which is also uh, also signaling red right now. Uh, very, 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 very concerning. In fact, we've actually put in a little bit, di little bit of divergence as well in the MVT signal. You can see the MVT signal kind of making a, you know, kind of. Do you want to call it a double top right here? I don't like calling it a double top. I just feel like that's so newbie. Um, while price action uh, working a little bit higher, uh, so that would be a case of divergence. More importantly, though, we are in the red zone, which has called all the major tops in Bitcoin's history perfectly. I know that there is some dissenting opinion saying that uh, the MVT signal, like someone, someone was saying the other day, that the MVT signal does not work. No, it's uh, that's not what Willie Wu was saying. He was saying that the network work momentum might might have been off due to new information but i'd actually have something to say about that as well um i mean i you know uh, you know by the same token I'm, I'm also going to show things that agree but i think what would really be shifting my opinion right now is that perhaps um while while this would suggest that you know we could we could we could initiate a uh, you know another sell-off the real question is does bitcoin make new lows and i would be a lot more a lot more neutral on saying something like that of course my opinion in the past has been you know ha has been certainly on that side but as far as technical analysis goes it's the weekly 200 simple that i'd be looking at right over here to kind of judge that and you can see that the weekly 200 simple is um <clears throat> is uh is, is all the way at about 3500 so as far as ta goes as far as trading goes i don't don't look for major downside targets until the 200 simple is broken um, right over here. It's just not appropriate as a trader, as you know, as, as an analyst, as an opinion. Yeah, we can talk about it, but you know, uh, you know, it do doesn't really, you, I, I don't trade that to begin with. Uh, so back on the daily, yes, we are signaling red, but keep in mind that each and every time that we have signaled red, yes, it has been major tops, but it has stayed at those areas for, in some cases, you know, months on end, uh, but on average about a month, um, right over here, this was a month, this was a few months, this was a couple months, this was one month, this was, a, this, this was like three or four weeks. Um, so yeah, you know, just another thing that just another thing historically saying, uh, be cautious. Now, bring up that chart. I forgot to actually put it on my screen. Let me just uh, let me just bring it up over here. Okay, let's go. Wooble. Um, hmm, where are we at? There it is. Bitcoin network momentum. I think this is the one that was getting passed around yesterday. But uh, I do want to show something, regardless of what Willy Woo showed. I think that you know. I think that both ways are kind of missing something because the the way that I look at this, and, and sorry, to, let me explain this. This is the Bitcoin network momentum chart. Which uh, let me make sure that it's um, yeah. You can see basically all you can you 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 can basically see everything that you need to see. I'll get out of the way a little bit. There you go. And uh, and essentially. This has been pretty damn good as being a leading indicator for judging the bottom. As you can see, when it gains momentum, that is a good sign that the lows are being put in, is what Willy Woo, I believe, is saying. But uh, 
and I agree with that. But here's the thing. That's just one piece of the puzzle. I believe that there's two factors. There's two facets to this. It's multifaceted. Um, and what's really happening is that you can see that once it gains momentum and it gets into an actual bull market, it, it, call, it you know, it, it calls the upwards momentum right over here. It creates a support trend line, right? It's create a, it's create a, it creates a support trend line for that for the rest of that parabolic rally going all the way on over here. And then the next major top is put in once we break that support trend line. So that happens right over here. And that would actually, that would actually have told you to knock it out on this spike right over here because we did not break the support trend line and uh, and then once we do break it it's onwards and downwards all the way over here until the, until it starts gaining momentum again which is kind of where we are right now by the way but more importantly look at this bitcoin puts in the lows right here on 2014 2015 which is exactly where it breaks above the support trend line of that past you know you know of this past segment right over here and I would argue that that is what is needed from not just not just fundamental perspective, but also like kind of an intuitive perspective. If you are looking at this to kind of judge like hodlers, essentially hodling <laughs> in a way. Um, so remember, this, this network momentum is a view is is. It basically looks into the value transmitted uh, through the through the Bitcoin blockchain denominated in Bitcoin value plotted against Bitcoin's price. So. What I'm, you know, what is that saying? It's basically saying it's it's I I do believe that that kind of confirms what I'm saying is that once we break back above this horizontal support that we broke down from when breaking this this parabolic mark cycle down, that's when it actually makes sense for Bitcoin to actually bottom out and go onwards and upwards, which is exactly what you see. It's gaining momentum all the way through. So people are saying that uh, because it's gaining momentum that we've already put in the lows, I would say that it needs to get, it needs to one gain momentum, which we are doing, but also to get above the support trend line that we broke down from on the past market cycle, which you can see we do the same sort of cycle right over here as compared to right over here where Bitcoin, you know, once it starts, once it starts getting that upwards momentum, it creates support trend line. And that holds up the whole rally from here all the way to 20,000. And then once we break the support trend line at a little bit after 20,000, that's when the dooms drop happens and uh, and as of right now we have not broken back above that area so I would still be cautious is what I'm saying uh, as that would you know still still kind of be a little bit of a dissenting opinion I will show some bullish things as well I do want to be balanced here I do want to be like Fox News you know fair and balanced so let's go and hmm yeah, let, let's go over here and check out the uh, the, the blockchain. Um, what do I want to call this? I guess I'll just I'll, I'll refer to this as the uh, the mind value of Bitcoin. So this is a chart of the of the value of the mind coins on Bitcoin, and this would actually suggest that the bottom is in. If it's safe, no, it's not. It's not saving my fucking joints again, man. It's so awful. <laughs> Oh, well, whatever. First world problems. Uh, each and every time that we put in a parabolic cycle on this, it creates support trend line that never gets broken again. And those tip, and those happen to match up with the lows on Bitcoin as well. So we have a parabolic cycle right here, puts in a support trend line, and we break out of that, becomes the lows of our next cycle. We put in another one right over here for that next parabolic. Whoops. You can see on this spike right over here, that becomes the lows of our next. And then, of course, parabolic spike right over here, that becomes perhaps the lows of our next one, the ones that we've already come down. You can see that we've actually already touched down on it. Now, keep in mind, uh, just because we touched down on it doesn't mean that we can't return turn back to it we have in the past for uh for sure but um you know but keep that in mind you know it's it's it would it would suggest that we have bottomed out most likely um but again does that mean that bitcoin can't come back return down to the low three or mid to low three thousands no it, does, it, it 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 would not it would not have anything to say about that um if we do put on if we do overlay a chart with uh with bitcoin which I think we can actually, I, I think I found a way to do it on log scale. Yeah, we do it like this. And uh, where's my log scale? There we go. Yeah, so you can see right over here, if you just match them, match them up, it actually does follow through pretty damn well. This first low being begotten by this horizontal uh, when it got tested, boom, boom, boom. Uh, this one right over here, boom, boom, boom. This one right over here, perhaps the same, you know, the same sort of behavior as, uh, as we do, you know, we can actually make a line chart on Bitcoin as well. In fact, it should line up uh, relatively well. So something like that would, would, uh, would be the right read. So keep that in mind. Um, there are certainly things showing their face, rearing their face, suggesting that the lows could be in. And I would say that the biggest argument for the lows being in is actually Litecoin. Um, Jesus Christ, motherfucker. This thing, it's like my trading view is stuck on in January of last year. Um, anyways, <clears throat> so, 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 so. 
Uh, if I want to do a few trend lines right here, it's not really too, doesn't really need to be too crazy. Uh, overall, Mrs. Litecoin, I don't have any reason to be bearish on her at all whatsoever. Uh, I mean, does that mean that Mrs. Litecoin is never going to pull back again? Fuck no. I mean, it's, it's going to pull back, uh, in those, but those pullbacks are going to be buys for myself. Uh, the big news here is that the daily had the, had the golden cross, and this is my rule. My rule is, and this is what I've been stating for the past, for the past month or so, ever, well, not a month, it's been about two weeks since we got it, um, and this is what I've been saying. Hey, my rule is... I do not short anything that has a golden cross and is above the 21 exponential. And that is exactly what happened uh, late March right over here. Uh, I, you know, we could have shown all the bearish things on Mrs. Litecoin, like uh, bearish divergence on the RSI. Uh, daily Stokes were, were coming down. Even Daily Jewel, I think, was... No, uh, Daily Jewel was not. Uh, Daily Jewel actually did not signal a sell. Funnily enough, uh, there's the there's a jewel rear, rearing its beautiful head, um, and uh, and then you know despite all of those bearish warnings, uh, boom, massive dildonators to the upside and uh, on increasing volume nonetheless. In fact, this whole rally has been done on increasing volume. Just look at this going back on from over here. This is exactly what I want to see on a major mark cycle low. Increasing volume as you dig your way out. It ideally in a V bottom fashion, which this is. Uh, so very, 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 very impressive. And, uh, and I think Mrs. Litecoin, you know, I, I don't have any reason. I haven't had any reason to be bearish on her for a while and I'd still stay with that. doesn't mean that I don't think that there will be a pullback there. There, there very likely will, but, uh, anywhere, you know, anywhere mid to low seventies, I think would be probably pretty damn good. Uh, if we could get that next week, that'd look all right. We do see weekly Stokes getting way up there. Uh, we do see weekly RSI reaching for the bullish control zone. We haven't seen this level since, you know, January, 2018. And a lot of the time you'll see a little bit of selling in that area just to you know just just because uh <clears throat> but you know looking at the daily i mean daily daily kind of wants to have another stab um da daily looks to me like it wants to have another stab actually uh right here i mean daily has no no divergence on the rsi yes it's getting really high but hey you know it's the same thing as to the downside i don't care how low or how high this thing gets i only care about divergence uh now how how high and how low you get can make it a lot easier to get divergence as you saw right over here and as you saw right over here um but you know, until I see that, I wouldn't really be calling a top on the daily time frame. In fact, like I said, this this actually looks like it wants to try again. Let's go down to a 12 hour. Okay, 12, 12 hour kind of is where it's at. Uh, 12 hour looks like it wants to pop back and uh, and test 81, uh, 81 or sorry, 82 bucks uh, first and foremost on Finex, and I believe uh, a 12 hour jewel. 12 hour jewel might signal something. I don't like these signals where the where the light blue overshoots. If you have access to the jewel, I don't like these ones. I, I I don't like these ones, but they do have a history of playing out. I don't take them myself, though. I'll put it that way. I don't trade misses like to begin with. Um, <clears throat> but you know, if that were to play out, I'd be looking for a move at the very least down to eighty two dollars, and then probably seventy five and a half dollars to to maybe low seventy dollars over time, uh, which I don't think hap You know, if it is going to happen, I don't think it happens till next week uh, until we get a new weekly. Sorry, and that would be Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern time earliest. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> you know, a lot of good things going on this chart. We do see some 12 hour bearish divergence here as well. So I would be going with the 12 hour saying that, Hey, we're at, we're at, we are at a major resistance for this one. We hit a major, you know, we hit a major psychological level at the one hundreds. Um, and I, you know, I do think that it's a little bit more likely that this one does, uh, uh, does consolidate a little bit lower before trying higher again. Could I be wrong on that? Yeah, absolutely. I very, I very well could. If this one does try higher again, it's going to reach for about a one, a buck ten, buck eleven, right over here. Uh, there's really not much stopping it from that area if it wants to. And uh, I mean, looking at the volume for the for this past rally. Mm, it definitely I mean is, is it possible yes but I, I'd still be kind of sticking with that I do think that it's a little bit more likely that it pops back down and, and tests this uh, level um, just based off the lower time frames and especially the fact that it is a weekend I don't you know I don't have too much faith in like a legitimate breakout on a weekend it has happened in the past like I said but it the the statistical chance of it is, is a lot less likely uh, let's go check out Mr. Buterall Mr. Buttersworth over here and what do we have uh, certainly the weakest of the bunch but I do think that this one wants to try again higher as well. Uh, we do see Daily Stokes wanted to cross back up to the upside. Uh, if it gave another test towards a 200 exponential at about a buck 82, that would look fine to me. Um, I I do think that the next test probably does get rejected though. Um, overall, this one is certainly the weakest of the bunch. It's 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 very uninspiring uh, in comparison to Bitcoin and Mrs. Litecoin, uh, Mrs. Litecoin in particular. But uh, but basically, we are working on what looks to be another. Well, do I want to call it that? No, I, I'd say that we probably have something new going on here. I'd probably say that we have some new going on. Uh, we did close above this horizontal right here. Is that the one to be watching? Yeah, I suppose you could say that. Yeah, I suppose you could say that. Okay. Um, 
it, you know, if it pops back down to, to a, uh, 161 and a half, uh, I would be looking for a bounce there. I do think that this one does to me look like it wants to try higher. Uh, 12 hour. Yeah. Tw uh, 12 hour can try higher as well. What about four hour? Um, four, yeah, four hour kind of looks like it wants to give another stab towards 174 actually. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not I'm 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 not too sold on this one. It's it's going to be it's going to do whatever Bitcoin and Mrs. Litecoin do. So, uh again, kind of same sort of same sort of mentality falls on falls on from there. I mean, this one had such a such an aggressive sell off from that 183 level to 149. Jesus Christ, man. Um I I'd, I'd be more watchful of Mr. Bitcoin and Mrs. Litecoin. They're more easier charts to read. Uh this one's more sloppy, I'd say. Uh here's what I could say from a higher time frame perspective though. <clears throat> Uh, the yellow 21 exponential, we have not been able to get above this since May of last year when Bitcoin had that bull trap to 10,000. Uh, and if Bic and if and if Mr. Buterall could close above it, uh, what is it, 159? Yeah, 159. If it could close above it by end of week, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow, essentially on Sunday, uh, I would I would look for this to overall have continuation. I would be looked and I'd be looking to be a buyer anywhere anywhere low low 160. Again, not financial advice, but I would be looking for continuation overall. Now, by the same token, if we do end the weekly below, then that all goes out the window. And that would suggest that this is just one massive consolidation and uh, likely corrective in nature, which would suggest uh, a downwards target. But right now we are living well above it, and uh, I'd still wait. I'd still wait on it. Keep in mind we do have a massive uh, exponential moving average cross right over here. So are we gonna are we gonna run up and test this area at uh, 250 or 240? possible uh if you know if this thing does close above the 21 exponential the next move i'd be looking towards ultimately would be i mean at, at the very least uh, 200 dollars, and then probably you know probably more likely 215 and uh, with a possibility of 245 those would be my three targets i suppose you could say i really hate doing things like that because you know it's I, I feel like those fucking those fucking guys who do the who do the who do the paid groups they'll they'll have like a million targets so that they always can be right it's like no shit it's like you're gonna be right if you fucking put a target one dollar up from your entry no shit motherfucker um anyways I, i'll get off that topic i'm, I'm i i i don't i, I want to separate myself from the paid group leaders and all that kind of shit uh it's not it's it's not what this place is about anyways um okay we spoke to all about that i think i covered everything that i want to say there let's go check out gbdc i'm, I'm curious how he closed the week yeah gbdc closed the week on a strong note actually uh rebind this red dildo i like that uh rebind this red dildo that can get cut a million ways as well uh weekly coming up to resistance but same thing the weekly did close above the 21 exponential here so i would imagine that bitcoin on spot is going to do the same thing and in fact that reminds me of, i forgot to talk about my most important thing from the medium time frame direction back on bitcoin it's going to essentially flow on over to gbc as well but uh, going back on over here to mr bitcoin we're going to be closing above this purple 200 exponential for the first time in five months. Uh, to me, this this is indicative of a, of a shift in medium time frame, uh, you know, a, a confirmation of medium time frame um, direction, uh, most likely. Uh, also, the 21 exponential, which we've been struggling struggling for for the last year or so, uh, we've been we've been unable to both open and close a weekly dildo above it for a very long time, and we will likely have a chance next week, I'd imagine, which would which would incite another test of this overhead resistance at about 5250. Uh, more importantly, it would suggest. That that any sort of pullback into this region, I'd be looking to be a buyer, which again is kind of li lined up with our daily, uh, with with the daily 200 simple and 200 exponential coming in right around 4600. So yes, the 21 exponential will be lower. It's it's technically uh, 4350 right now, but uh, but overall, you know, it's gonna it's gonna rise up. You can see that's sharply turning right now. So the next take probably gonna bring it up to about 44 of uh, you know 4450 ish maybe, um, something like that would kind of make sense. So. Overall, that's what I'd be looking for, looking towards. Uh, I do want to bring up the Trollinger bands just for a second. Again, not my favorite way of doing things, but but more importantly, we spoke about this uh, a couple of weeks ago that Bitcoin was kind of likely to, to test the upper Trollinger band um, with our first open and close above the medium band, or sorry, above the medium moving average. This kind of skid mark uh, colored uh, moving average, just twenty simple. That's all it is. We had our first open and close above it since uh, since essentially the bull market, um, and right now we're gonna have a chance to close outside the top upper band, which is which is usually indicative that this trend wants to continue and, and try again. You know, when you trend above the uh, above the bands, that's a good thing. Just like over here when we were trending below, that was, you know, uh, uh, that was a sign to, to stay short. Uh, this is going to be a sign to stay long from the medium time frame direction as far as I look at it. Uh, of course, you know, still a lot of time until the weekly closes. Um, you know, could the weekly close below this level, which is about 45.50? Possible. I've seen crazier things, no doubt. But uh, I think it's kind of a little bit unlikely. I, you know, I, I'd, I'd say it's it's probably it's probably on the safer side to assume that. Oh, shit, I shouldn't say this. 
if if Bitcoin does close above it, though, I would be looking for a retest into that upper 200 band, which is probably going to be coming around that same 4600 level, just like you saw the retest right over here, and then buoy off of it. I'd be looking for the same thing right over here, a retest on it, and then and then try higher, most likely. Um, so yeah, that's what I'd also be cognizant of. But you know, like I said, it, it's kind of be gotten by the other indicators. Uh, trolling band certainly not my favorite one, but uh, but but kind of useful right now. You do see the dailies uh, certainly trending above the upper band as well. But uh, we have, or sorry, we or have we lost the upper band? No, we have not. We have not just yet. In fact, we've been closing all these guys above it. Uh, this, yeah, th this is going to be very, uh, this is actually going to be quite revealing later tonight. Do we do we close above or below this upper band, which is actually uh, about 5087 on stamp? Um, if we close above it, I'd be looking for more continuation to the top side of the range, 5250. Uh, if we close below it, I'd be looking for a consolidation down, um, uh, likely ultimately towards a 4600 level. So that's going to, you know, that, that could dictate the pace. And that actually is quite helpful um, from that perspective as, you know, especially on a weekend, hard to gauge that sort of a thing. Anyways, uh, we spoke all about that. Let's go check out the top shit coins in this market. We got Cardano over here. Again, called a top on that the other day, and I'd still kind of stick with that. It's not that I'm bearish on this, though. I'm just looking for a pullback. Uh, first pullback area would be looking for 1750. Uh, second pullback area would be looking right around here about 1650. Uh, we do have a golden cross. We are above all. The, we are above the 21. So realistically, if I could get another test down to the 21, about 1650, I think that that would be a pretty damn good trade, or at least, or, or at least high probability for a bounce. We do technically have bearish divergence right now. Now we uh, on the daily we do have uh, daily stokes coming down we do have daily jewel uh not a perfect sell but mm, kind of lining up not really uh so I would be looking for a pullback, but I'm not bearish on it. I'm, I'm just looking for a pullback. I wouldn't be bearish on this one as long as it's essentially above uh, 1450, 1400 a share. Yeah. Uh, let's go check out uh, BMB count. What's BMB count doing? Yeah, I'd be kind of saying the same thing on this one. It's kind of the same thing. Uh, Daily Stokes coming down. Daily RSI, major bearish divergence. Daily Jewel is ooh. Daily Jewel signaled a perfect sell yesterday. I would I would stick with that. So technically, you usually when you get a Daily Jewel, uh, or sorry, whenever you get any sort of Jewel signal, you usually get one more spike up in the contra direction, and then the move happens. So I would be looking, and and this one's just. This an, this is an example of 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 a perfect 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 perfect. It doesn't get any better than this. Um, I I know that you can't short BNB, but fair enough. Uh, this rally has been pretty extended, um, hitting some pretty major resistances coming in from this block territory right over here. If we put on the drawing tools, I think I've something. Yeah, Jesus Christ, man, it's it's still saving my uh, my January drawings, but we don't we don't really need them right now. I could just do this one with oscillators. Uh, first target. Uh, right around here, maybe uh, 17 and a half bucks. If things get a little more crazy, I'd be looking down around 15, uh, low 15s. Uh, if things get a little more crazy, but uh, going to be dictated probably by Bitcoin. This one overall, one of the strongest, or one of the strongest in the market. Uh, Zcash looks to me like it wants to take another stab towards 78 bucks. <clears throat> uh, Daily Stokes still up. Daily RSI, mm, some bearish divergence, but I, I still think that it gets another try towards 17, or sorry, 78. Uh, Bcash, um, yeah, same thing here, man. Same thing. It is consolidating rather high, which is typically a good sign, but uh, bearish divergence on the daily RSI and uh, daily stokes coming down. A little bit of divergence there as well. Uh, I would like to see it come back down and test 250 uh, sometime in the next week. Uh, let's see if my drawing saved here. Yeah, they did. So uh, we got a blue box right over here. Um, by the same token, hey, if, if it does take out $300, I would be looking for a move all the way over here towards uh, 380 again. And, uh, and ultimately higher if that were to happen. Ultimately higher, I mean, uh, 600 at that point would, would, would be likely. Uh, but right now, I think next move is likely down. Uh, Tron Cash, Tron Cash, uh, looking looking a little bit more like it wants to try again here. I, I think that it wants to give another try towards this uh, 2.9 cent region. Um, ultimately, I think that this one tries higher towards uh, 3.2. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I'd, I'd stick with that. Neo Cash, um, Neo Cash right at the 200 exponential. Don't like to be a buyer right at major resistance, but we've ground this area quite a bit. One, two, three wicks into this area. Uh, this one's hanging at high, man. This one's hanging at high. Uh, let's go down to a 12 hour. Um, you know, I I think that this one probably does try higher actually sooner rather than later. This this chart does look like it wants to try higher. Uh, I do want to I do want to match up this level. Did we take this level out? Yeah, we did. And above the and above the three seven seven exponential as well. Yeah. Uh, next area I'd be looking towards is technically this area right here at about fifteen and a half bucks. Or perhaps hold on, perhaps I'm wrong about this. No, no, I I, I think I'd stick with that. I think I would stick with that. About let let's make it fifteen and a quarter. Fifteen and a quarter. Uh, EOS Cash. Um, EOS Cash. I think I believe is putting in a top likely right here. Uh, major bearish divergence on the twelve hour. Uh, let's look at the daily. 
da no daily wants to give another stab towards this towards the top side of this uh, rising channel resistance so i do believe that it's probably putting it at the top but it gets another try towards the top side of this 575 ish area um let's go on over here check out uh, mr ripple ripple me nipples oh man we got that second try towards uh, 38 cents nicely done mr ripples nipples and probably pops back down here uh test you know th uh, 34 34 and a half 30 34 ish area um and then I'll, and then i'll like to see this one try higher again daily stokes are up and breaking the trend line daily rsi mm, people are going to call that divergence it's not until we confirm a local high i think this one tries higher i, I think it gets another try at about uh probably 40 cents actually overall and again just not saving my fucking trend lines i need to sip, i need to take a sip of this water man my throat is damn thirsty All right, Water Buffalo is ready and rolling, baby. So yeah, uh, Mr. Ripples, uh, I, again, it's, it's the weekly that I'd really be going off of here. Does the weekly close above or below the 21? Do we close above or below 34 and a half cents? If we close above, I'm looking for another move towards 40, you know, above 40 cents probably. If we close below, then this takes on a more bearish nature. Um, ooh, excuse me, bad manners. Uh, Monero Cash, what are we looking at over here? Um, yeah, right at major resistances. Uh, this this one's a little bit more difficult. This one's a little bit more difficult. I would say that it's going to do whatever Bitcoin does, right? But it is at some major resistances. The 200 simple, 200 exponential, and also this horizontal right here. Um, I'd go with the weekly look as well as we are getting close to the end of the week. Uh, if we can close above... If we can close above 65 and 34 cents, I would be looking for this to come back down and test a little bit lower. But ultimately, that test is to be bought, and we do and, uh, and we do propel higher, uh, testing perhaps all the way up to 90 dollars. Um, however, if we if we do close the weekly below, what was it, 63? 63, 63 bucks. We'll, we'll just call it 63 bucks. If we close the weekly below 63 bucks, that's not going to look good. Uh, downwards pressure if that happens. But for now, we're well above, and I do believe that probably does end above and probably does try harm. Uh, Stellar Cash, um, right at the wow, right, right at our major, major resistance. So Stellar Cash could really do something special here. And keep your eyes on Stellar. Uh, the fact is, is that Stellar, yes, it did sell off the area that we were looking for, but to be bought back immediately and retest this area right at the twelve and a half cent region, I think, I think is a sign of strength. Consolidating at a major resistance, we do see daily oscillators getting, yeah, a little bit of bearish divergence going on here. Uh, daily daily soaks are still up, but here's the thing: I'd still go with the weekly. We're so close to ending the week. There's no harm in waiting for this one. Do we end above or below twelve and a half cents? If we end above twelve and a half cents, I'd be looking for a move all the way here. Actually, uh, I'd be looking for a move probably uh, probably over sixteen cents if that would happen. If we end below, tw uh, what was it, twelve and a half cents? Then I would look for us to probably test lower, uh, eleven and a half cents more. More, more, more likely and then it's a little bit more of an ambiguous picture but that's what i'd say right now again all these closures happening tomorrow at 8 p.m eastern of time and uh that's why i'd be cautious here uh spies spies uh Closing the week strong on a very very high note 288 and a half in fact closing on the highs very fucking good very fucking good uh still kind of rounding out a rising or you know a rising wedge right over here but again i you know my rule is you got a golden cross we've had a golden cross right over here been bullish on this ever since i mean the you know we and going back to the conversation about looking at the 21 exponential on a monthly time frame to kind of judge if something is generally bullish generally bearish we well, can see over here you know we uh on, on, on this channel we knew that uh, as soon as january was closed above this 21 exponential at 260 it's time to be fucking long baby and uh onwards and upwards there you go lovely absolutely lovely um yeah, I mean, technically, next resistance is going to be your former highs, to 289 to 292. I mean, we're, we're kind of in that area right now. I, th I think it probably does take it out. This is this is your beautiful V bottom out and up. It's powerful, very fucking powerful, very, very powerful. So we'll close this. Uh, we'll, we'll now close it out with Bitcoin because, well, it's Bitcoin show, baby. It's Bitcoin show. And so we'll go down to the four hour time frame just because I don't think that the, the higher time frames are too, they're probably not too relevant right now. But uh, but essentially more preliminary resistance right at 50-50. If that gets taken out to the upside, I'm looking for a move towards uh, 51-50 to 52-50 in this blue box territory. If that does get taken out on the weekend, which I think is extremely unlikely, uh, then I'd be looking for a move towards uh, 5,600. <clears throat> By the same token, uh, what I think is a little bit more likely is that if we do take out this area, test over here, then pop back down, uh, gets rejected. A lot of the time you will see 
hunt on a weekend. And uh, and realistically, I just want to be playing support and resistance. And uh, we actually just test the resistance. So usually after that, you go test support. Um, down around here is where you look. Is this more preliminary support right around uh, 4,800? We'll call it. Um, and uh, probably does bounce if if it does get tested on a weekend, probably does bounce it. Um, and uh, and realistically, I am looking for a test. I I would still be looking for a test down here to forty six hundred, but it's probably going to happen next week. I want to see the weekly. I want to see this weekly confirm above. 45 first and then I want to see a test back down around that area anywhere around that area does it again I'm not being like too specific with my numbers and remember like this is you know I'm not saying that this has to happen 100% it's just I, I like a trade opportunity in that area for a little bit more of an intermediary type position um, which right now I uh, don't really don't really like any positions in this range I mean I am I am technically holding long but um, but uh, but uh, uh, but it is accounted for. I am short some uh, some forty two fifty calls against it, kind of locking in profits as long as we're, as long as we're below fifty fifty. Um, you know, it's it's all the same to me. It's all just one range captured. Uh, if we do move above there, then yeah, uh, time to time you know time time to get rid of those short calls. Time to put on another long. But for right now, just kind of hanging out here, just chilling. Um, if we do break forty eight hundred, then I would be looking for that move towards uh, towards forty six. But remember that you know this is. <clears throat> like I said, prob probably not going to happen this week and probably going to happen sometime next week. Uh, it's really going to depend on where we close this next weekly, which I would imagine is going to be, you know, it's, it's, I mean, it's very, very likely to be below the 50 exponential and above the 21, which, which would make me think that we come back down and, and test that lower area. Um, and it's probably, and to me, it's probably going to be a buy again, not because it's a, it's a guaranteed trade, just because I don't have to risk all that much to find out if I'm going to be wrong. If uh, I'd have a stop loss at like a 45, 45, 50, something like that. Um, which I think is certainly worth, worth the, uh, worth the risk to find out if that trade is going to work out or not. Anyways, that's going to do it for today. It's been an absolute pleasure to speak with you on this lovely uh, Saturday morning over here from Helsinki, Finland. Nice, bright, and sunny morning. So I hope that uh, your part of the world is going nice and swell as well. Or maybe you live here in, in Finland as well. So then fucking hit me up, man. I have no friends. <laughs> no, that's that's what the game is for. And I see a dildo party going on over there, and I do pause about that. I'm actually going to be buying a uh, a, speak, a speaker set later today, uh, so I can so I can once again hear the all the animations and whatnot, so I don't be negligent. As I feel really bad not welcoming all the new people in. My God, I just want to say a massive, massive welcome to all the new people here. It is a pleasure to have you, pleasure to meet you, and uh, and man, you're joining a pretty fucking cool community because we have we have some. I I truly believe this. We have some of the fucking coolest people here. Uh, just going through the Discord, yeah, we have all sorts of we have all sorts of conversations, no doubt about that. We talk about all sorts of things, but at the end of the day, man, it really does feel like people are, you know, people are, um, it's people are looking to get better here, and that's what it's all about, man. That's you know, there, there's a great saying: you are the average of the five people that you hang around with the most. Well, if you hang around with people who are trying to learn something that you want to be good at, or uh, or or you go, or, or 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 in some way, you know, just po you know, having positive forward directions. That's what it's all about, man. Anyways, I'll leave you with that, the nice positive message of the day. I'll be back on later tomorrow um, with some more long-term analysis. Oh, I'm also going to be working on another video for MetaTrader 5. I've been getting a lot of questions with this because I've been trading Forex recently um, with the Evolve Markets uh, with the Evolve Markets broker, which uses MT5, MetaTrader 5. So I'll do another tutorial video on that. If you want to get started beforehand, there is a link in the description of this video for Evolve.Markets, and it's really great. You can use you can use Bitcoin as collateral to trade margin uh, up to 500x on 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 pretty much all currency pairs plus commodities plus equities and also and also magic net money as well they actually you can actually trade bitcoin there if you want to as well so uh so check that one out <clears throat> again link in this link is in the description i'll leave you with that take care and uh, see you soon